Hello, this will be your discussion on dysrhythmias originating from the atrium. So our focus will be three dysrhythmias. So you have your premature atrial contractions, atrial flutter, and atrial fibrillation. Let's talk about your premature atrial contractions. As the term implies premature, meaning the contractions has started or the electrical impulses has started before the next normal impulse of the sinus node. Hence, it is referred to as the early beat. Oftentimes, the patient will say that my heart skip a bit. Now, your concern here in premature atrial contraction is because of the enhanced automaticity of your atrium. Okay, Because of the enhanced automaticity of your atrium, it has a tendency to have an electrical impulse starting before the next normal impulse should be. If you would look at this one, the comparison of your PAC and your normal heartbeat, you can notice that the P wave and the QRS complex has emerged here earlier. And then there is a longer pause and then another PQRS complex has emerged. Okay, now, what are the causes for this one? So it could be caffeine because, you know, caffeine could stimulate our, caf it could stimulate our um, electrical impulses, alcohol also, stretching of the atrial myocardium, anxiety, hypokalemia, hypermetabolic state as such thyroid or, or thyroid toxicosis or hyperthyroidism. Then you have atrial ischemia, injury, and infarction. So any of these conditions could cause your, cause your premature atrial contractions. Now, characteristics. Your ventricular and atrial rate would depend on the underlying rhythm. Your ventricular and atrial rhythm has a tendency to become irregular and what we refer to as non-compensatory pause. So what do we mean by non-compensatory pause? Okay, there is a tendency for the PP interval to be shorter and then later on followed by a longer PP interval. Look at this example. Now, the P wave here and the P wave here have a short distance. However, the P wave from this contraction here going towards this contraction has a longer distance, meaning it is not compensating for the signal which is delayed along the way. Hence, it is referred to as non-compensatory pause. Now, in your P wave, there could be an early and different P wave. And then in your QRS shape and duration, it may be normal, but it may become abnormal or may even be absent. If it is absent, you are referring to it as a black premature atrial contraction. However, oftentimes you will be seeing, if the problem of your patient is purely PAC, you will be seeing one is to one. Okay, one is to one ratio or two. Yeah, one is to one ratio for your P wave and QRS complex. Okay, as you can notice for the PR interval, the early P wave has a shorter than normal. PR interval, but still between 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds, which is the normal for your PR interval. Okay, if you can notice, okay, the P wave or the PR interval is shorter, however, it is still within normal range. As I have mentioned, PQRS is still 1 is to 1, meaning 1 P wave, 1 QRS, 1 P wave, another QRS complex. So that is maintained in your premature atrial contractions. Now, common to this patient, your patient might complain of pulse or skip beat. And during physical assessment, you might notice pulse deficit. So when I say pulse deficit, it's the tendency that your cardiac rate is higher compared to your peripheral radial rate okay, or your radial pulse rate and an ulnar pulse rate or any peripheral pulse for that matter. Okay, That's your pulse deficit. Usually, we expect a pulse deficit of 2 beats per minute to be normal. But if your patient has atrial problems, there is a tendency for your pulse deficit to be higher. Then, treatment. For treatment, treatment is usually uh, not done if the PAC is infrequent. However, if you are seeing more than six PACs in a one-minute strip, okay, you need to uh, take note that this may be a signal of worsening disease or onset of more dangerous dysrhythmia, okay, which may be progressing towards your atrial fibrillation. And then, if uh, whatever the cause is, that will be treated accordingly. So, for example, if your patient has hypokalemia, you need to give your potassium supplementation. If your patient has hypermetabolic state, like for example, hyperthyroidism, you need to give drugs which can halt the production of your thyroid hormones. So, our treatment is geared toward or geared towards causation. 
the next rhythm that we have is your atrial flutter. So when we say atrial flutter, there is a rapid regular atrial rhythm still thought to be caused by your increased atrial automaticity or increased atrial re-entry mechanism. The difference between your atrial or your PACs in your atrial flutter is that in your atrial flutter, okay, uh, there is increased conduction of your atrium. In other words, the rate of your atria could be from 250 to 400 beats per minute. That is for your atria. However, you do not expect the ventricles to be able to catch up with the 250 to 400. Because if you can recall, the rate of your SA node is usually faster than that of your AV node. Because of the slower AV node rate, we have what we refer to as the therapeutic block at the AV node. Not all of the atrial impulses being conducted will go towards your ventricles and you call this one the therapeutic block of your AV node or commonly your AV block. Now, if you can notice here, the tendency is that in your PAC, the PQRS ratio is 1 is to 1. But if you would look at here in your atrial flutter, the tendency is that okay, there is a 1 QRS complex for several P waves. So for example, for this one, this may be a ratio of 4 is to 1. As you can see, there are 4 P waves okay, in one QRS complex. So that is one characteristic of your atrial flutter. Okay, so again, atrial rate is 250 to 400. Ventricular rate is only 75 to 150 because your patient would have the AV block. In this case, it is considered to be a therapeutic AV block. If you would look at the rhythm earlier, it is still considered to be regular. Okay, it's considered to be regular because as you can see, it follows a specific pattern. Okay, the ventricular rhythm is also regular. However, it can be irregular if there will be changes in your AV conduction. Okay, so if you would look at the regularity, that's why oftentimes they refer to this one as your sawtooth appearance. Okay, sawtooth appearance. Or it has a tendency to become F waves. Okay, your F waves, which are your fibrillatory waves. Multiple F waves may make it difficult to determine the PR interval. That's why you could not usually count for the PR interval if your patient would have your atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation. As mentioned, the PQRS ratio is either 2 is to 1, 3 is or 4 is to 1. However, if you can notice, the ratio it will be regular. Okay? If it is 4 is to 1, it will be 4 is to 1 throughout the strip. That is one characteristic again of your atrial flutter. Manifestations. Patient may have the following signs and symptoms. Now, patient can have low blood pressure because of the ineffectivity of the contraction of your ventricles. Your patient may also have palpitations because take note there is decreased atrial rate. Also, your patient may manifest with weakness and then you will have dizziness and fainting. Dizziness and fainting would again go back to your impaired cerebral tissue perfusion. So treatment, since there is an increase in rate, our treatment is focused on stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system. So recall your vagal maneuvers, such as your carotid massage and then your valsalva maneuver. Again, whenever there is an increase in rate, your management will be towards the stimulation of your vagal maneuvers. Or again, that will be your parasympathetic nervous system. Then we have cardioversion. Cardioversion is the use of electricity to convert a dysrhythmia to a normal sinus rhythm. Okay, so our goal is to convert your dysrhythmia to a normal sinus rhythm. Then medications. There are several medications that can be used for your atrial flutter. Okay, one is adenosine. Your adenosine is an antiarrhythmic preparation, just like all other drugs there. It can cause your sympathetic block. Okay, it causes your sympathetic block block. What do you mean by sympathetic block? It reduces the time okay, or reduces the conduction, I mean, or slows the conduction between your SA node going towards your AV node. Okay, It may be able to terminate your tachycardia. And then, this is usually administered IV by rapid administration. So, these are among the drugs which is administered rapidly. Okay, So, when you give adenosine, this should be pushed fast. And since your patient will have, um, okay, your patient is having atrial flutter, your caffeine is contraindicated. That would include your tea, coffee, and cola, and even your chocolates, because these are considered to be stimulants, and they can aggravate your atrial flutter. Then, because of the risk for 
because of the risk for thrombus formation, you'd be giving your antithrombotic agents. Then you have your digitalis preparation, such as your digoxin. So remember, the effect of digoxin is to slow down your heart rate and to make your heart contractions be more effective. That's why we're giving digoxin also for this one. And then the drug of choices would include your beta blockers and then your calcium channel blockers. For the beta blockers, we have your esmolol and then you have your propanolol. These are the common medications. For your calcium channel blockers, you can have your dipins, you can have your verapamil, and then your diltiazem. Okay, so those are the medications commonly used to manage your atrial flutter. The next problem that you might encounter is atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, there is a rapid, uncoordinated twitching of atrial muscles. The keyword here perhaps is rapid and uncoordinated. Okay, the cause is abnormal impulse formation. Risk factors would include advanced itch. Age, because you know that if your patient is aging, there is damage already on the conduction system. Valvular disease, especially if we're talking about damage to your tricuspid valve. Coronary artery disease, hypertension. Heart failure, hyperthyroidism is again hypermetabolic state. Pulmonary disease could induce stress to your heart, alcohol, and even your open heart surgery. So class, one thing that you need to notice is that after open heart surgery, there may be several dysrhythmias that can occur to our patient. That's why they are placed on continuous cardiac monitoring. So characteristic for your atrial fibrillation, if you would compare the rate of your atrial flutter and atrial fibrillation, take note that the rate of your atrial flutter is at 250 to 400. However, for your atrial fibrillation, the atrial rate is at 300 to 600. And then if you would look at the ventricular rate, the ventricular rate is also higher compared to your atrial flutter. The, atri uh, the ventricular rate for your atrial fibrillation is playing at 120 to 200. Okay, so basically we can say that atrial fibrillation is faster compared to your atrial flutter. And then your atrial fibrillation is more disorganized compared to that of atrial flutter. Now, so it's mentioned it's highly irregular. Take note of the keyword disorganized. And then the QRS complex may be normal or abnormal. For the P wave class, it is no, it is not discernible. So unlike your flatter, in the flatter you can see the presence of two to three P waves and then one QRS complex. But your for your atrial fibrillation, the tendency is that you'll be seeing lines, okay, and then your QRS complex only. Okay, it is irregular. The P wave is irregular, it's undulating and referred to as your fibrillatory or F waves. If you will be asked if F wave is common on what kind of dysrhythmia, that will be in your atrial fibrillation rather than your atrial flatter. Although in atrial flutter, it can be seen, it is more common in your atrial fibrillation. Now, PR interval could not be measured because you cannot see where the P wave is. The P to the QRS ratio is many is to one. It could not be counted if two is to one, three is to one, or four is to one. It's just many is to one because again, your P wave could not be discerned. Because as I have mentioned, atrial fibrillation is disorganized. Okay, it's considered to be disorganized. Now, manifestations. Some of the patients may still be asymptomatic, that is, if atrial fibrillation has mild, moderate, mild to moderate ventricular response. However, once your atrial fibrillation would have severe ventricular response, your patient has a tendency to become symptomatic. So, they may experience palpitations and clinical manifestations already of heart failure. The palpitations is present and it has a tendency to be irregular. And then, the pulses heard at the apex may not be palpable at the periphery. So there is an evident pulse deficit of even more than two beats per minute. Diagnostic test, so you have your ECG, of course, you have your blood test, then you have your chest x-ray, exercise stress test, and whole term monitoring. So for your blood test, just like other dysrhythmia, since we are considering hypermetabolic state, we need to have your thyroid panel. So when I say thyroid panel, you are taking your TSH or your thyroid stimulating hormone, your T3 and your T4, which are the active hormones of your thyroid. Okay, you would also want to check the BUN and creatinine in case there are problems with renal functioning, and then the SGPT, SGOT in case there are problems with hepatic functioning. Okay, X-ray to evaluate pulmonary vasculature because pulmonary hypertension could possibly lead to your atrial fibrillation. Then you have your um, exercise stress test 
just to exclude myocardial ischemia or reproduce exercise induced atrial fibrillation. So that's, that way, we can check that it could be the exercise that is triggering the atrial fibrillation of our patient or the stress that is triggering the AFib of our patient. Now, what will be the treatment for these patients? Just like the previous dysrhythmias that we have, we have your electrical cardioversion. So for your electrical cardioversion, it is indicated if your patient has AFib, which is unstable. Usually, we refer to that one as atrial fibrillation with severe ventricular response. Now, prior, okay, prior to your uh, electrical cardioversion, remember that you need to give anticoagulant therapy to your patient. The purpose of anticoagulant is to prevent clot formation. And then there are medications that can be used to enhance the success of the conversion to sinus rhythm. Among those or common to those is amiodarone and sotalol. And then warfarin is usually given to the patient up to four weeks after your procedure or electrical cardioversion. Remember, this is an elective procedure and you need the consent of your patient. Pharmacological management. Other than electrical cardioversion, you can also have your pharmacological management. Digoxin. Your digoxin is known to be dromotropic, negative dromotropic, and negative chronotropic, but positive inotropic. It slows the conduction of your AV node. Hence, it is referred to as the drug of choice for your chronic atrial fibrillation. Again, class, take note, these are atrial dysrhythmias, so the origin of the problem is on the AV node. So your digoxin is used to slow down your AV node. Then you have your antithrombotic agents, because again, in atrial fibrillation, your patient is at risk for clot formation. Okay, so for clot formation, if low risk, you can have your aspirin 75 to 325 OD, and then least moderate stroke risk, so you can have your warfarin and your dabigatran. Dabigatran has been among the new antiplatelet medications available in the market. Then, you can give your immediate or short-term anticoagulation by using your IV heparin okay, or your low molecular weight heparin until warfarin could be started. Then you can also give your beta blocker or your calcium channel blockers. Just like your any other medication, your beta blocker and calcium channel blocker are intended to slow down the heart rate of your patient. And we know that in this type of dysrhythmia, there is an increase of heart rate. Other than your electric cardioversion class, you also have what you refer to as your pharmacologic cardioversion. So when I say pharmacologic cardioversion, these medications could possibly convert your abnormal ECG to normal QRS complexes, okay, or normal ECG or normal sinus rhythm. However, these medications should be given within seven days upon the onset of AFib, okay, because uh, if beyond seven days, the tendency is that it will become less effective. Now, among these medications, your dofetilide is to be a preferred medication because it is effective in converting your sinus rhythm. Other than that, your ACE inhibitors, which are your antihypertensives, could also be used for the management of your dysrhythmia or your atrial flutter. Okay, so again, you have the three, okay, you have the three atrial problems there. So one is your premature atrial contractions, as the term implies premature atrial contractions, meaning there is emergence of your atrial contractions before the normal one should possibly occur. Then you have your atrial flutter, which is characterized by sawtooth appearance. However, it is more organized. And then you have your atrial fibrillation, which is disorganized. So again, these are your dysrhythmias, which originate from your atrial or your atrioventricular node. Thank you very much for your attention.